Petit Neat School in Payson. Constructed during 1901, its doors were officially opened to students in January 1902 and was actively used until the end of the 1987 school year. It was then retired by the school district because it was too expensive to bring it up to today's building codes for occupancy by school children. The building sat idle for two years while vandals took their toll. Neighborhood children seemed to be attracted to abandoned buildings, making window glass their primary object for target practice. Other thoughtless school-aged children broke in and literally tore the insides apart. Dumping the contents of tempera paint cans all over the carpets, unraveling reels of educational movie film from one room to another, breaking tables and chairs, smashing windows, tearing up papers and throwing them everywhere, throwing audio-visual equipment against the walls, writing with paints and permanent markers on the walls, etc. They left the building in utter shambles. In addition, weekend beer drinkers seeking private quarters to relieve their aggressions soon found the abandoned building a haven for their careless whims, breaking out over a dozen balusters from the antique stair balustrade and splattering beer and their own human waste products throughout the main floor of the building, all resulting in a tremendous amount of internal damage. A group of concerned citizens who wanted to see the building put to good use rather than be torn down formed a committee to research the possibility of preserving it. This would not be a menial task, since in addition to the vandalism, several key building modifications had been made over the years to suit the needs of the school district. These citizens desired to restore the building to as near the original condition as possible. Another year passed and the vandalism continued. Frustrated by the lack of care and concern for the building and the inability of the local authorities to control the situation, several members of the not yet fully organized restoration group volunteered to monitor the building day and night. A burglar alarm system was installed by one committee member and arrangements were made with a telephone company to install a line to connect the alarm. The word was spread to the community that the alarm system was installed and after only one more weekend beer party that was broken up by the sounding alarm, no more incidents of vandalism have been encountered. By now, the preservation group was officially organized and named themselves People Preserving Petit Neat, or PPP, and they approached the city with their plans. The city made arrangements with the school district to trade the land and building for some city-owned property near the high school that the district needed for expansion. The PPP then negotiated with the city to carry the building utility costs and grounds upkeep for several years until some revenue could be generated. With all of the legal formalities out of the way, the arduous task of restoration began. First, the kitchen and auditorium area of the North Wing, which was added in 1959, needed to be restored so it could be used as a reception center for reunions, dances, family parties, etc., to help generate immediate cash flow. Finally, the restoration of the original Petit Neat School began. The first job was to restore the missing staircase. In order to build a library, a classroom, and an office for the school's secretary, the northeastern staircase that led from the main level up to the eastern mezzanine had been removed. Fortunately, the mezzanine itself and the center staircase leading up to the second floor were left intact. They were simply covered by a false floor and wall and were used as storage space. The original stair balustrade and all of the hand-turned balusters had been lost and needed to be reconstructed using the remaining staircases as a model.
Each curved section of balustrade alone costs $300 to reconstruct. The die used to shape the handrail to match the existing ones cost $1,000. Although the entire project to replace this staircase cost nearly $10,000, it was minimized by the foresight of the construction contractors at the time of remodeling. During the 1960s, the floors were carpeted to reduce noise and upkeep. In some rooms, the carpet was laid down over a layer of asbestos tile, which was glued to a layer of a tar paper-like material, which was glued to the original floor material. This was discovered when the carpets were torn up. To the surprise and delight of the PPP, the original floor material was maple hardwood. Since the original finish of the floor was a simple dark brown oil stain, no one paid much attention to it when the carpet was laid. Once the carpet and the other layers were removed, the hardwood was sanded and an acrylic finish was applied. The true beauty of the floors were brought to light. This effort required many hours of physically demanding work, but the final product is spectacular. The floor in the Northwest classroom on the main floor had a different problem which required as much effort to restore as all of the others combined. For some reason, no hardwood floor was installed. When the carpet was pulled up, the floor underneath it had all the appearance of a material that resembled modern-day particle board. As soon as the volunteers attempted to remove it, however, the secret was revealed. Chicken wire had been laid down and nailed to the tongue and groove fur floorboards, and a one-inch thick layer of a mortar-like material had been spread over the wire. The surface was then smoothed, and a pattern scribed into it that resembled four by eight foot sheets of particle board. To remove it, they chipped away in small sections with picks and sledgehammers, then scooped up shovels full of mortar chunks which clung to the wire. Because the wire was nailed to the floorboards, the job was excruciating. Some of the electrical wiring was added many years after the building's construction, and it was done by the quickest and cheapest means possible wire mold. It was run along the edges of blackboards, along the wainscoting, and up the door frames. Since the floor had to be completely removed in this particular classroom, the opportunity was seized and new conduits were added between the floor joists. The floor was then rebuilt with a particle board base and finished with an all-new hardwood floor. The labor for the preparation of the floor was donated, but the materials and installation must be paid for. Another modification which had been made was the removal of the northwest staircase leading from the main entrance on the west to the basement. The PPP decided that, rather than replace that staircase, they would convert what had been a closet space into a display area for some sculptures and paintings that will be donated by the Averd Fairbanks family, Averd having been a former Payson resident. 
Other restoration work included replacing the ceiling and plaster above the east mezzanine, partly because of the poor condition of the plaster and partly because of the need for electrical wiring. The plan is to convert that section of the building into an area that can be used for reception lines for wedding parties, class reunions, and so on. An architect who specializes in old building restoration was hired to propose the needed changes and, with the approval of the PPP, has drawn up the plans that will make a beautiful enhancement to the building while maintaining the original turn of the century style that gives it its unique character. The plaster was removed by volunteer laborers. Channels were chiseled into the original adobe bricks, conduits and electrical boxes were installed, and a professional plastering crew was hired to reapply new plaster to precisely match that which was originally installed in 1901. To do this, a wire mesh, finer than chicken wire, was attached to the bricks, then a first coat of coarse plaster was applied over the wire. After that coat was allowed to set, a second finished coat was applied and textured to match the existing plastered patterns. The final coat was allowed to set and was then painted with a color that was selected by the PPP in consultation with the architect and an interior decorator as being characteristic of the day. Old, aesthetically unpleasant looking and damaged acoustic ceiling tiles were removed and replaced with sheetrock after new electrical conduits were run. Fluorescent light fixtures were also removed and replaced with elegant turn-of-the-century style light fixtures to further enhance the mezzanine and lobby areas. Track lighting was installed on the ceiling near the walls of the second floor commons area to allow for the lighting of various paintings that will be displayed under the direction of the visual arts department. The primary use of the building has been determined by the PPP to house the Petit Need Academy of the Arts and Learning Center. All aspects of the performing and visual arts will be represented and will teach the classical and folk art forms to students from Payson and surrounding communities. In addition, the Payson Art Guild is developing an art gallery. The Payson Historic Society is developing a pictorial history of Payson Museum and the DUP is developing a pioneer museum. Long-range plans include the development of the exterior grounds with a stairway and fountain that leads down away from the west entrance to Utah Avenue. The curved and sloping southwestern lawn forms a natural amphitheater and plans call for the construction of an outdoor stage for symphony, dance, and live theater productions. A building of this size and a project of this magnitude are not without a sizable monetary outlay, not only for the restoration itself, but for the ongoing upkeep and utility needs. In order to help defray the costs of building upkeep, the class instructors for each arts group will be paying a percentage of the tuition they collect from students to the PPP. Also, the reception center and other building usage rentals have been established. Special consideration has been given, however, to the nonprofit service groups of Payson by offering them generous discounts for the use of the building. Further consideration will be given to those service groups who will donate some of the much needed manual labor to restore the building and keep it in good repair. The cost of the restoration project, even with all of the voluntary labor, will involve a considerable expense. The PPP is currently researching major grants to help defray expenses. These monies, if granted, represent a long-term solution to the problem, but short-term solutions must also be found. Money is needed immediately to cover costs already incurred, namely the replacement of the northeastern staircase, the plastering, sheet rocking, electrical wiring, plumbing, and woodwork restoration, 
the materials for the new hardwood floor in the Northwest classroom, and more. The Petit Need Academy is a historic architectural treasure and has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. The PPP is working hard to bring this historic old building back to its original splendor and to utilize it for the betterment of the community, not only through the training of its youth in the cultural arts, but also in the use of the building for various social, educational, and cultural activities. Your help is requested and will be greatly appreciated. The PPP is a nonprofit corporation and has been officially granted federal tax exempt status. This makes any contribution to the restoration of this beautiful landmark fully tax deductible. To make your tax deductible contribution, make your check or money order payable to PPP and mail it to. People Preserving Petit Neat, P.O. Box 603, Payson, Utah, 84651. Please do not send cash.